Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here and in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video We are going to be finding out what happens to the father and son that Arthur and Hosea steal a stagecoach from This happens in one of the first few missions in the game in chapter 2 called the Spines of America So this mission before we actually get to the mission occurs at a location called Carmody Dell and if you guys have never been here before it's like a Tiny little farm and homestead. On the surface level, everything looks very, very normal. Like, it just consists of a big house and a barn, and there's, you know, a big pen for cattle. And we are visiting right now, like, before we've completed any missions. So this should give you a better idea of what's going on. So again, on the surface level, things seem pretty simple. However, the owner of this homestead, Bob Crawford, is not very kind to strangers. You guys can see that the second we sort of got his attention, he was very hostile. And there's a reason for that, which I'll explain in a little bit. So now that you have a little bit of background, the first time and the only time in which you see this guy in an official mission occurs in chapter two, like I said, in the spines of America. Take a listen to this. He's our new partner. I ain't no such thing. Prospective new partner, if he likes us. Liking ain't the problem. Trusting is, as I said. Keep your voices down. I don't want my boss hearing. This is a sideline. Of course. Look at us. Honest as the day is long. Exactly. I'll tell you what. Let us prove ourselves. <laughs> prove ourselves? To this clown, what you talking about? Good day, Hosea. Good luck with your business dealings. Listen, uh, he's rough and ready and quick with his tongue, but I swear you can trust him and trust me. I'm an old man. You're not old, Seamus. I'm old enough. And you know why I ain't dead? You don't trust idiots. Exactly. We're not idiots. Let us prove it to you. Okay. I'll tell you what. Arthur. Old Bob Crawford and his boys just bought a beautiful stolen stagecoach from upstate. It's in their barn. Now, you go get that, and then we can work together. Who's old Bob Crawford? An acquaintance of mine. So you want us to take out your competition? Well, he, he's not just an acquaintance, but a cousin. By marriage, I also want to see if you boys got what it takes. Now, you survived that. Where is he? Well, he's in a farmhouse just northwest of here called Karma de Dell. It's just up the train tracks as you're heading up towards Fort Wallace. There's also some money in that house, but that's your business, not mine. But don't kill nobody. Folks know we ain't intimate no more, and they'll know it was me. But you're fine with us robbing your cousin. By marriage. And yes, I'd love it. You heard the man. Let's go rob his cousin. By marriage. Lead the way. He said the place is just northwest of here. Me? The other one who's been out gallivanting around here. That's what you call it. Clearly you've recovered from your bear encounter. Could have played that better, couldn't you? Thought you wanted me here to show some strong arm. That's usually how it goes. Yes, but you know how this works. Come on, Hosea. That feather's a joke. And that's why he's perfect. He won't cause us any problems. A safe spot to fence wagons and coaches? That's easy money for us. I guess you're right. Come on, it's not like he's asking us to rob a bank. If the two of us can't steal a stagecoach from Seamus' old crooked cousin by marriage, we should hang up our hats now. Okay, so as you guys saw there, this is Bob Crawford. Now, Bob Crawford lives at Carmody Dell with his son, who is also named Bob Crawford. So he's Bob Crawford Jr., and long story short is Bob Crawford purchased a stolen stagecoach that Seamus eventually wants Hosea and Arthur to steal. Now, when you get to his ranch for the first time, you can actually make a decision on how you want to go about stealing the stagecoach. Or wait until nightfall. Sneak in, then I'll get the coach. You can try the house. What do you think? Let's do it now. Sure. All right, then. Don't follow me. <laughs> so you can choose to do this during the day or the night. If you decide to do it during the night, Bob and his son are sleeping in the house. 
So the player can steal items from the house and Hosea and Arthur will remain undetected of theft of the stagecoach. However, if they decide to do it during the daytime, which I think is the better route, Hosea will distract Bob Crawford and his son with some act that he is like a massage therapist or a chiropractor, whatever the case is. So Arthur can steal items from the house and get the stagecoach, uh, which is, in my opinion, the best way to go about doing it. So no matter what route you take, you essentially have to steal the stagecoach. Now, if you do decide to rob them during the daytime, Crawford's son will hear some noise and they'll actually chase after you for a little bit. But they don't make it very far and Emerald Ranch is only a short distance away. And once you've returned the stagecoach, this is what happens. Nice work, Hosea. It was mostly Arthur. Like I said, coarse but competent. Here. Thank you. If you find any other coaches that need selling, I'll see what I can offer you for them. But discreet, you know. Of course. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'm heading back to camp, I think. You coming? Nah, I'll catch up with you later. Okay. Stay out of trouble. Okay, so you stole their stagecoach, and now you can work for Seamus, basically the fence. And I wanted to find out what happened to the father and son after you stole the stagecoach. So now the footage that you're looking at is returning to Carmody Dell after you actually stole the stagecoach. Now, it seems as if this guy does not remember Arthur because he wasn't like immediately hostile to the point where he started shooting at him. He was just like normally angry. Now, Arthur can actually greet or antagonize him and he'll have a unique line of dialogue. Hey there, hold a minute, we need to talk. Calm down, what you want? Just passing through, that's it. All right, can't be too careful with strangers. Someone recently robbed a very nice stagecoach of mine. My damn son's disappearing, off gallivanting again. Carmen Adele ain't for public traffic, stranger. Move along. Okay, okay, I really am done now. Okay, so Bob Crawford says you can't be too careful with strangers, and his son is disappearing off gallivanting again. So that is kind of interesting. So we know that Bob Crawford is okay, but what happened to his son, Bob Crawford Jr.? Well, for that, I actually think we need to go to the epilogue. You can revisit this area as John Marston. And in 1907, there is a big difference at the property, at least a big difference that I noticed. If you return to Carmody Dell, you will still find that Bob Crawford is there, but his son is once again nowhere to be found. So keep in mind, it would have been about eight years later. Well, the one big difference I noticed on the property is that there was a grave sitting under this tree. Uh, it's sort of like a dirt grave with rocks on the border, and it's just a single cross. I think that is what happened to Bob Crawford Jr. I think he might have actually died. Now, we don't have a lot of background on Bob Crawford Jr. Again, the only thing we get is that he seems to be a little bit disobedient as he sort of ran away from Carmody Dell. But other than that, we don't have a ton of details. Now, there's also a good chance that this could be the wife of Bob Crawford or the mother of Junior because we actually don't see her at all. So that would kind of make sense if that was the grave. But because she's never mentioned at all, it might be a little bit tough to assume that. Now, there's actually a lot of things that you can get from this place. Uh, there's a cigarette card on the fireplace. In the wardrobe upstairs, there's a ginseng elixir. You can find a platinum pocket watch there. There's also a carbine repeater that can be found uh, upstairs too. So there's a lot of good stuff at this ranch. Uh, there's also a large cow pen and chicken coop. So if you're looking for supplies that animals like that provide, well, this is a really good spot for that. But I think that does officially answer the question and solve the mystery of what happened to them after you stole the stagecoach. Because once again, that's the only mission they appear in. It seems as if their only purpose in Red Dead Redemption 2 was to have something stolen from them. So I found that to be kind of interesting, and I'm glad I went back to sort of investigate what happened to them. If you guys feel like you know what happened to Bob Crawford Jr. or the missing mother or wife, 
Be sure to let me know in the comments down below, or you can always reach out to me on my Facebook page. It's really easy to get in contact with me there. You can share stories and mysteries that you'd like me to investigate or check out. Anyways, if you did go on and enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.